Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to this webinar on Africa, a preprint service for African researchers. Uh, we are lucky enough to be joined today uh, by a number of the advisory board and co-founders of AfriKive, uh, who will be telling you more about the service, uh, who it's useful for and how. I am Ian Sullivan. I'm from the Center for Open Science. Uh, we help provide the infrastructure for AfriKive, uh, and I'll be introducing things a little bit today. So, I am from the Center for Open Science, as I mentioned. Uh, we are a nonprofit uh, that's run out of Virginia over in the United States. Our mission is to help increase the openness, reproducibility, and integrity of scientific research. Uh, and part of our, how we fulfill that mission is to help support communities like the one behind Africa. So we are recording this webinar at the moment. Uh, our intent is to share that online for people who are not able to make it today uh, and get uh, at least a translation into French to help spread the word inside uh, some of the Francophone communities. Uh, if you have questions at any point during the presentation, feel free to use the Zoom question and answer tool uh, that should be available to you. If you have questions afterwards, you can always email contact at cos.io or info at africive.org. So with that, I will hand things over to our steering committee uh, who can walk you through a little bit more of the details about the service. Okay. Welcome, everybody. We were hoping that Justin can do the introductions. Justin? Yeah. So, okay, perfect. hi, everybody. <laughs> and welcome all to this Africa Civ webinar. So, we're going to talk about this African repository for African scientists. So, the, about the steering committee of, the, of Africa Civ, I'm Justin. I'm Justin Aino from the University of Paraku in Benin, and I'm co-founder of Africa Seed. And we have here Obasegun Tekina. He is at Field Square Global. <laughs> it's a tech hub based in Lagos, Nigeria, right? And we also have uh, Joe Havman, Joanna Havman, from Access to Perspective in Germany. So also with Jan from Center of, of Open Science, we're going to discuss about how preprints are useful for scientists in Africa and how Africa Seed can help make African content on the scientific web be more visible. So that's all, Joe. Okay, um, I'm sharing my screen. Taking over. Oh, or you can just navigate for me. It would be great. Okay, just so a quick outline of what we're going to talk about. So I'll um, just briefly mention what is a preprint for whomever doesn't know what it is. Why do we need a preprint repository for Africa at all? Who can submit to Africa Archive? And then um, Justin will talk more about um, African languages and how these relate to Africa Archive and why we think it's important. Um, then Oba is going to introduce you to the uploading and submission process on the archive and then Ian will conclude on a few more notes on what the Open Science Framework can do for you. So, starting. So this is basically, if you go to the website africarchive.org, this is the screen that you see. And then on the next slide, um, this is basically Africa Archive is a, one of a growing number of specialized repositories, specialized either for their discipline, covering psychology or marine biology or marine research more generally, and also regional um, repositories such as Africa Archive for Africa, but there's also one for Indonesia, Indonesian research output and Arab archives covering all the Arabic 
research topics and also research out output from Arabic speaking countries, basically, and yeah, Arabic as a language. Um, so what is a preprint to start with? It's basically the version of a manuscript that you also would um, submit to a journal um, for peer review and for publication in a peer re reviewed journal. Um, but it's also like put on a manuscript, um, on a preprint repository like Africa Archive or any of the others. And this can also be the, the repository of your university or your own website. Uh, makes it available for the general public, but also for other researchers before the publication process is completed. And this can be interesting because the publication process and the whole peer review process can sometimes take um, a couple of months or up to three or five years in some cases. And this obviously would delay and also hinder the um, communication possibilities of your research output and you won't be able to communicate what you're working on in in a timely manner so that is why um, people increasingly upload their manuscripts um, so-called preprints um, on repositories such as the one that we are hosting together with um, yeah okay um, what are the benefits of preprints? Why should we publish um, your preprint? Um, first of all, it's open access, so you can obviously share with the global research community what you're working on and also get feedback on your work. So you can actually improve, uh, submit an improved version for peer review in a journal, at, um, yeah, in a research journal if you so wish. Um, this in turn will accelerate your scientific progress and it has all, there have been studies that showed that citation rate increases by around 30 percent if you also publish your preprint with um, any other publications or for peer review and this in turn again will also help you with your reputation building so basically you will be known globally in, a, in your field of expertise as a researcher. Um, but why do we need this um, specific, specifically for Africa? So it's um, maybe there's also um, something that's, that me as obviously a non-African um, um, found out with talking to my colleagues and I, I'm sure that Justin and Ober can um, agree with me that we need more visibility for African research output and therefore also increase collaboration across continents, also to, to let um, the rest of the science community um, know what African scientists are working on, especially as we're tackling global challenges such as migration and global um, climate change and um, sustainable um, use of natural resources and so on and so forth. So with this in mind, um, there is a like not only a need, but also demand for us to work closer together and yeah, again, to make with, um, the research output from the African country more visible and to engage African scientists in the global discourse on research topics. And what this platform also, um, what we are hoping will also increase is interdisciplinary research. So by choosing the topic of Africa or, like, or by implementing a repository for African scientists, irrespective of their um, discipline, we want to trigger interdisciplinary research so that people learn, um, people who study natural sciences also learn about approaches and questions that are being asked in the humanities and social sciences. Okay, so basically we approach obviously African scientists, those who are working on the African continent, but also those who work at the host institute outside Africa. Um, because this is also about visibility of African scientists per se. We also encourage submissions from non-African scientists, 
to report on research conducted on African territory um, so that they can also engage in <laughs> collaboration with African researchers that they probably didn't know before. Um, so, um, and, and we hope that non-African scientists who already collaborate with African scientists will upload manuscripts with African co-authors. So that's why that note is also listed. Um, we also approach non-African scientists who report on research relevant to African affairs so that whatever is related to Africa or African topics um, and yeah, so that we engage in interdisciplinary and also intercontinental discussions here. Um, yeah, um, so this is also, again, why, why a preprint and why a preprint repository. So by uploading your work to Africa Archive in the African context, you have the opportunity to disseminate your work free and free of charge and quickly and engage in the global discussion um, before you publish your work in a peer-reviewed journal. Um, all articles and manuscripts will be granted with a Creative Commons um, license and a digital object identifier and are also indexed in Google Scholar. Um, what's important to note is that if you want to um, refer to a preprint manuscript and especially if you want to cite it in your um, peer of it article, then um, you should clearly mark the preprint status. So you can just add the note like this is a preprint and there's also standards being developed how to um, how to mark preprints properly. But also by adding um, the term Africa Archive and uh, OSF, Open Science Framework, um, will eventually also be enough um, once the concept is clear and obvious and, and more widely used, and this will be um, clear enough to state this is a preprint version of an article. Um, having said this, that it's important to know that preprints are not formally peer reviewed, and this is one of the major concerns that people may have, but it shouldn't be a concern or which again has been checked and scientifically tested. Usually the quality of preprints is um, almost as high or comparably high as published articles in peer reviewed journals. But you should keep in mind that there's not a formal peer review process in place. Um, again, it's about uh, making research output visible and opening discussions. And, and you can also, um, you can also uh, submit newer updated versions of your manuscript. So the manuscript can also grow in quality over time on the preprint repository. But Ian might um, could yeah might talk more about this in more detail. Um, yeah, so preprints are open access, and um, we also want to st state that you should obviously still um, continue um, aiming to publish in peer-reviewed journals as long as this is the measure for yeah for the global scientific discourse. Um, it's at this stage where we are in the open science discussion is another means um, to communicate your research output and also um, referring back to all the, all the um, benefits that come with preprint manuscripts and their discussion. Yeah, we are basically in a changing world and yeah, we don't want to discourage you from um, publishing in a peer reviewed journal as yet as where we are now for and probably for the next couple of months and years. You can check um, or you should also check if you plan to publish in a peer-reviewed journal if the journal of your choice is open for having the preprint manuscript published before um, layouting um, and you can do that in the Shepard Romeo service which we will provide the link to in the chat and also in the follow-up um, yeah, in the description of this video as a follow-up for the seminar 
for the webinar. Um, but just a quick note so around 80 or 82 percent of all journals that are published in English um, globally do accept um, and acknowledge your publication of the preprint manuscript. So in most cases you're on the safe side, but to double check you should go to the Sherpa Romeo service or to the open access policy of your journal. Um, so yeah, so these are the types of manuscripts that we um, encourage you to to submit to Africa Archive. Obviously, manuscripts for research articles can also be um, the manuscripts of re review papers, project proposals, case studies of any kind. Um, very important. Um, this is also the place for negative or null results, meaning. Um, those results that do not support a, support a hypothesis. And this is normally very difficult to get published in a peer-reviewed journal. Um, you can also submit data sets and methods papers, technical notes, um, and description papers. You can also submit anything else that relates to research output or is um, or can be seen as research output, and then we will decide on an ind individual um, on an individual basis, and we will also get in touch with you if we have further questions. Um, yeah, very important also, and this is more of Justin's part to discuss, is we accept um, translations of any of the above types of manuscripts. So if you submit in a, in a language that's different from English or French, um, then whoever feels um, yeah, happy to and skilled enough to translate to another language, then we'd be very um, happy to, for you to contribute with that. Okay, and now Hi, it's thanks, yeah. Justin. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so when we start with African scenes, people ask why we decided to accept submission in local language in Africa. So people ask that and when they know that the formal or the classic way to share documentation or to share purpose is either in English or in French depending on the area of the globe where you are but we decided to share our content both in these languages I mean English and French but also in African local language so you have to know that there's about 2,000 local languages that are spoken in Africa, in the whole continent. And there are already some countries, some government of some countries that decided to invest themselves more on the promotion of local language. So countries such as Senegal, and in Senegal, they, they decided to, to use the, one of the, the most spoken local language, I mean, Wolof, as a national language or an official language and in Nigeria also in Kenya so this country decided to invest more in promoting local language in their country so it's because they noticed that local language have a, a very big potential for disseminate information or disseminate content in Africa in the research community in Africa because a language that most of people or many people speak is more able to to reach its aims so since in africa more many people speak local language it's it will be more easy to share knowledge or to share content in this language so people are able or are inclined to share their knowledge if they have opportunity something like a, a quote that say that the you can forget everything, you can forget everything you learn, everything you do all during your life, but there's something you can never forget, it's your mother tongue, it's your mother language, so that's very important. And in the bottom of the slide, there is a link to an article on, on BBC Africa explaining how local language are very important in science for the continent. So, yeah, please. Thanks. So, 
on Africa, see if people or users can decide to submit their articles, the whole articles, or just the the summary of the article, or either the data sets they want to submit in local language as Swahili, Yoruba, Igbo, Africans, all of that I talk about now, and font, font that's a, a local language in my country, Benin, and any other language of Africa. And to promote this, since we noticed that from to now, from the starting of Africa Safe to now, more users haven't decided yet to submit their articles in local language. We decide to to plan a workshop on Republica in next December in Accra to encourage people to submit their the, the papers in local language. So we decided to plan a workshop for translating some of contents, one or two articles that are already published on Africa Safe in a local language in one or two local two different local languages so over i think it's over to now yes uh, Oba, i think it's your turn now Um, there's a submission guide link which um, outlines details, um, FAQs on how to um, navigate through challenges while submitting your um, preprint. Um, you can also you could check the link. Um, it has um, um, a number of use cases which you could go through. So the first thing is to um, go to africacy.com and um, sign up. When you sign up, it brings you to this page um, where you have your full name, email, um, you confirm the email and uh, a password. And then you um, accept the terms and conditions. And then of course you select um, the verification part of the sign up here. And then you click create account. And then you come back to this page after you must have verified your email. Um, you come back here to the main page and then you can click add a preprint. When you click a preprint, it brings you to this page where you can upload your file and give a title to your paper. So you could use the same, um, um, uh, title of the paper as the main title of the file here and then you save and continue the next page brings you to choose the discipline and sub disciplines for your paper so you can pick from a wide range of um, disciplines from business education engineering law and many others like that and then you can click you can select um, sub-disciplines under, for instance, if you take um, social and behavioral science, you could select sub-disciplines under that, which could be sociology, um, social statistics, sports studies. And then you could also now select what wider range um, um, discipline, that could be educational psychology. So if you select psychology, you could select educational psychology or sociology or that. Then you click save and continue. Then um, the next page has to do with you uh, choosing a license, adding the abstract, tags, and publication dates. So you could um, copy and paste your abstract from your paper directly into the abstract box. And then you could also select the license which you want so um, most preprints uploaded on the platform are licensed under um, the cc but we also have other licenses there which you could go through we have a list of them that you could go through them then you could also check to um, if you have a d if you know the doi you could also include the doi um, if you don't it's, it's not it's optional 
and then the publication date that if you've published it you could also select that and also include random um, keywords that have to do with the paper so if it's um, educational sociology for instance you could select education sociology um, human behavior as uh, tags and you can add as many tags as possible under the keywords section there. and then you click um, save and continue and then you could so you click save and continue and you go to the next page which has to do with adding the authors of the paper so you could have other people on the platform who um, have have uploaded preprints who are also co-authors on your own paper. You can also add them as authors so that directly under your paper you have more, you have those people listed there and people could also check out the papers they've also published too. So you will add that under there and then you click submit. And directly under, once you click submit, it goes through, so we provide, um, a kind of reviewing um, process whereby it goes through, um, we use a pre moderation approach whereby um, we have moderators who can go through it and um, check for it, make sure it's best fit for the platform and it's, um, it's in line with all the guidelines for the platform. And then once it passes through that, it's verified and then you get an email saying your paper is now public. And uh, that's all, basically. Thank you. Sure, I think you're next. Oh, okay. So basically, just to conclude, um, here are all our social channels, the websites, for now redirect you to, well, the um, OSF, platform where you can directly submit your manuscripts. Then we're also on Twitter, Facebook. There's also a Facebook discussion group if you want to join that and discuss with the community. We have a LinkedIn account and we are also working on GitHub. So if you want to join the team, you're most welcome to do so on GitHub as well. So yeah, just get in touch with us and let's take this to the next level. And also obviously share um, share the word with your communities and upload your own work and that of your colleagues. All right, thank you very much. Uh, so keen observers uh, will have noted on that submit slide uh, that there's the option uh, to use an OSF project to manage uh, supplemental materials and data, um, appendices, and so forth. I'm going to show you what that actually is uh, and give you an idea of some of the capabilities that are also available to you if you submit your work uh, to AFRICHIVE. So I will show you this. Okay, so behind uh, AFRICHIVE is an uh, open research management and collaboration tool called OSF, the Open Science Framework. Um, when you submit a manuscript uh, or data set or any material to AFRICHIVE, in the background, an OSF project is being created to host those materials. Uh, and make them available for you for future updating and expansion. Uh, you can also use OSF before you get to the manuscript stage if you're looking for a tool to make it easier to support the same kinds of international and multidiscipline uh, collaborations uh, that Joe mentioned at the beginning. Um, OSF is open to all disciplines and all regions uh, so that it's an easy way to collaborate with people uh, across institutional and national boundaries. Uh, I'll give you a quick tour of OSF. Uh, so when you create an account uh, to submit your uh, manuscript to AFRICHIVE, uh, it's actually an OSF 
account. So you can use the same one if you just go to osf.io and hit sign in. Uh, that same username and password will work for you. Uh, here I have, it knows who I am, uh, so it does not ask me for a password. And here I have a collection of my most recent projects. Um, I'm just going to create a new project to show you what that looks like. I hit create new project, and I can just uh, add a nice description. Um, and hit create. And then I will go to my new project. So I mentioned that OSF is a general purpose uh, research management and collaboration tool. Uh, this is what all projects start out looking like. Um, if you add some additional materials to your AfriKive uh, preprint, uh, you'll get a project that looks just like this with a big link up at the top that points people at the preprint. Uh, on the preprint page, there will also be a link that points people at this project uh, so that there's a nice tight coupling between the two areas and anyone who gets to your preprint can always find the supplemental materials and so forth. Um, OSF gives you a couple of basic tools to use in collaborating. Um, to start with, there's a wiki that you can use to help people navigate all of the materials that you've uh, posted or that you're interested in sharing, get a better understanding of your research um, as it goes forward. There's a file section. You can just upload whatever type of files you want, um, data files, appendices, uh, anything related to your research. This is a great thing to use uh, prospectively if you're starting your research and want to share and collaborate with people uh, that may not all be using the same tools. Um, you can add some additional structure to your project with components. So I might create a data component. Um, that component will get its own unique identifier uh, and can have files inside it as well so that it's a nice straightforward place to point people to the specific file that I want to reference in my paper or uh, the specific data set that I want to share with my colleagues. Um, it's useful also to uh, take a look at what this looks like once you've actually completed a study and decided to make it public. Uh, so I'm going to show you an example public one. So this is a paper that was published back in 2013. Um, this is connected to an open access publication uh, that came out at the same time inside the wiki. Uh, it explains both the research and uh, the supplemental materials that are available here. In this case, the publication was about calculating effect size, and so the files that he's made available are spreadsheets specifically to make calculating those uh, effect sizes as he suggests as easy as possible for researchers. Um, you can see over here in the recent activity list that even though this paper went up in 2013, uh, he's continued to update these supplemental materials uh, till around this time last year. Um, so this is a great way to give your research and uh, the research outputs continued life uh, and demonstrate their continued impact on the field uh, above and beyond uh, when you get the manuscript published uh, or you make it uh, available. So this is a great way with making data and materials available getting your preprint out there to increase the speed of your knowledge dissemination, uh, and then by continuing to update any of the materials that are relevant, uh, you can also extend the window of impact for that publication.
uh, into the foreseeable future. Uh, as long as your data and other research outputs are continuing to inspire and fuel new development of ideas, uh, you can continue to promote them. Uh, and you see here we have a nice little citation tool that's built in so that anyone who comes to this page, uh, just like when they come to your preprint page, uh, is going to see the list of authors and know how to give you uh, the recognition and um, citation that you deserve. So with that, uh, I think I'll just see if anyone has some questions. Um, and if there's anything else that our panelists would like to share. Are there any questions so far at all? Anything to add? Julien, I saw you in, in the audience. Do you have any questions? Julien Hoering, or Luc, Luc Allemand. You can um, also comment if you think this is a good idea or how do you think we should improve the service. Here's a question by Dina. If you submit a manuscript to Africa Archive, is there a need to create a corresponding project on OSF? That's basically one step. Um, like. Like if you, as you submit, creates a project, right? Yes, as soon as you hit submit, it creates that project in the background for you. Uh, so if you're already at the point where you have a manuscript, uh, you don't have to worry about creating an OSF project. You can go straight to the AfriCarp website. Uh, if you want to use OSF uh, as a way to manage and uh, your research and collaborations while you're performing them, uh, there's an easy way to link that existing project in the submission form on AFRICHIVE. Uh, so either way, there'll only be one project created. Mm -hmm. And another question is how many preprints? So, so far we have 20 manuscripts, 20 individual projects on Africa Archive. Which is quite a decent start for we're now like two months into like since we started. Um, <coughs> and the growth, yeah, but there's room for more, obviously. So if you have any manuscripts you want to submit, just go ahead. Also, another question which probably could be interesting, and people kept asking as we introduce also other repositories um, apart from Africa Archive. We usually suggest that um, you can submit your manuscripts to also any of the others. It's not meant to compete with any of the other preprint repositories. Um, but the question obviously is how much sense does that make in the long run? Because you, as you update the version of your manuscripts, you might need to update that on also the other repositories. And is there a the plan and idea, I think we spoke about this, but maybe for the audience to connect the repositories on the open science framework with each other so that you can just tag the repository where you think your manuscript belongs to. I'm not sure uh, most of the repositories that exist there already, the different preprint communities have been relatively exclusive. Um, because they were very discipline specific. Uh, so the language and region specific ones are all part of a new wave uh, that started in the last year or so. So I'm sure as we run into situations where people are members of multiple communities and want to share the research that way, uh, that's something that we'll be working on more in the future. Mm. Okay. Other questions or comments? Oba or, and Justin, do you want to add anything?
So, uh, okay. Yeah, move on, Uba, move. Okay, so um, I just wanted to talk about the multi-language uh, on the platform. Like, we, you can upload any, any language and you can upload your preference in any language. Um, um, if you're comfortable with doing your research work in your um, local language, you could upload in that same local language. And also, um, um, it, it doesn't have to be published. Um, it doesn't have to be um, peer reviewed yet. You could um, be running a, a, a background proposal or um, um, a rough research and you, you, haven't, you don't have all the pieces yet together, but you have the basic flow of what your research is going to be about. So you can also put that out on the preprint service. So, yeah, Justin. Okay, just to come out about what uh, June said now. People don't have just to, uh, it doesn't mean that if you submit your paper on Africa Save, you can't submit it on another repository. So as we said, Africa Save is a proper repository when you submit your work, you can even submit it in a, let's say, classical journal for peer review. So we have something like a, a flexibility with other other source of context. So okay, thanks. Joe, want to add something? Um other than like as Ian presented the open science framework in more detail, we just figured that maybe we use it as a pro project management tool, which you like in the audience, everybody's welcome to do and that's that's what it meant what it's meant for for science project management and maybe we can also use it for the further development of the africa archive repository so um you might find a link in one of our communications in in the next couple of weeks and yeah you're most welcome to join that discussion as well because it's open obviously so Again, any comments on the ideation, on like the submission guidelines? If you think we missed a point, please approach us or comment in the in the document yourself. And um, yeah, we welcome also other team members. This is a volunteer project. Maybe that's also important to note. So we do this um, as a volunteer effort. Um, and it's a lot of work, but it's fun because we think it's important and it gives like, yeah, we hope we'll be contributing in a useful manner. Um, so, and if you want to join us, you're most welcome to do so. All right, thanks very what much. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, okay, yes. So, um, also, if you've published your, your paper in in another journal, you could also um, um, put it up on the platform. You only need to confirm from the DOI if uh, if uh, you have the, the license to share it on the uh, open um, preprint service like um, this platform. So you need to confirm that. But of course, if you've published in a different journal in a different on a different platform you can also put it on this platform so. Um, so we had a comment uh from julian about uh doing project management in local languages uh and then submitting uh after that to a field specialized repository in english or to english language publications um i think that's a great point uh the OSF portion that I mentioned for project management, it's important to point out that if you go to OSF and create a project, that is private by default. So you have to actively add other contributors in order for them to have access to it. Uh, you then have the capability to make some of that project public later on to share your data or your materials, etc. Um, if you submit to Africa, because that's a 
publication venue. Uh, the project that's going to be created for you is public by default. And so that's specifically about sharing and publishing the materials. Uh, but you're right that you absolutely can uh, use the same tools for private collaboration in whichever language uh, is most appropriate to your collaboration. Uh, and then share that uh, either in that language on Africaive, uh, in a specific field um, related repository in English in all of the above. All right, so if we don't have uh, any other questions, I just wanted to thank everyone uh, for joining us uh, and for putting in all the work uh, to get Africaive and uh, the community around it off the ground um, and just encourage everyone to spread the word uh, to other researchers that you know uh, that are doing work in and around and with African researchers. Thank you very much.